There it goes. All right. Praise the Lord. It was at the cross. And only, do you realize that? It was only at the cross where everything was taken care of, every sin was paid for, every demon defeated, however you want to call it. It was only at the cross where it all took place. And it was only because of Jesus that you and I can sing those songs today, that we can have that peace that we sung about. It's only because of what Jesus did at Calvary that we have what we have today. No other man could do it. There was no other God to do it. Like Susie mentioned a little bit earlier, Muhammad couldn't do it, and Buddha couldn't do it, Confucius, whoever. The Mormon prophets can't do it. The Jehovah Witness Watchtower can't do it. The Assemblies of God can't do it. The Baptist Church can't do it. It was only Jesus. Only in Him, by Him, and through Him that every sin was paid. Amen. Which gave us, gave us, allowed for us to have the Holy Spirit resident in us. Amen. To make of us what God has originally intended mankind to be. As I was studying for this morning, and if you want to go over to Ephesians chapter 1, we're going to start off there with uh, what we're, uh, we've been studying, the, the Holy Spirit, and we're going to look at some of the names of the Holy Spirit, or, or the names that He goes by a lot of times. And, and we're going to look at that, we're going to start off in Ephesians chapter 1, but you know, it's, it's the Holy Spirit who brings about that holiness in us. It's the Holy Spirit who brings about in us and makes of us what God originally intended mankind to be. As I was studying for this and, 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 and reading and, and, and studying, the Lord brought to my mind, you know, that He is restoring mankind. That is the redemption that God has done for us. He has redeemed us, brought us back, or is bringing us back, will bring us back to that place and that position that God originally intended for mankind to have in fellowship with Him and in, 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 in our role in this world, whatever it was. You see, God will have His way. That's where I'm going with that. God will have His purpose fulfilled. The enemy is trying with all his might and has been for who knows how long a time, you know, even before man was created, the enemy has been trying to thwart or to to hinder. The enemy has been trying to say, I can stop what God has planned for His creation. Do you know today, it's not going to happen. Man. The enemy is not powerful enough. God is almighty. He is all powerful. He has the last say. Man. God will have His way in this world, in this universe, and in our lives. Amen? Man. He's just telling us, just trust me. Just believe me. I got this in control. There's no need to worry. Over and over in his word, I think what did they say, 365 or more times, he says, don't be afraid, don't fear, fear not. Once for every day of the year, if you want to look at it that way. But we can trust in the Lord Amen. and in the power of His might. You see, we're not mighty enough. We're not strong enough. We can't overcome the enemy by ourselves. We've got to have the help of the Holy Spirit. We've got to have His power working in us. And that's what Jesus died, or one of the benefits of Calvary, if you will. He died to save us from our sin, to save us from self, really. Amen. And He died that we can have that relationship and that infilling of the power of His Holy Spirit once again. You know, as we've been learning and, and, and seeing here, when God made man, He breathed into him. And, and one of the types of the Holy Spirit is that breath of life. God breathed life into mankind. He told Adam, He said, whenever you sin, if you take of that fruit, you will die. Adam did not physically die. He died spiritually, which is really a worse death than physical death. We need to understand that. We need to communicate that to our loved ones. Spiritual death is a worst place or a worst condition, however you want to look at it, 
than physical death. Physical death is not the end of everything. Those of us who have loved ones who have passed on, that they've known the Lord, that, that, that physical death is not the end of that loved one that we've had in our, in our lives. Amen. It is only just the beginning of a new era, new place in life. I don't want to say a new position because we are alive to God in Christ when we give our hearts and lives to Him, spiritually made alive whenever we by faith put our trust in Him. So we become a new creation even though we're in an old shell sometimes, an old tent. We become a new creation in Christ Jesus when we're saved. And that new creation will not die. It will not pass on. It will not cease to exist as some try to teach. But as we're looking at the Holy Spirit and we're studying the Holy Spirit, I want to just look at a few of the names of the Holy Spirit. Do you know that names are important? A lot of times, you know, not so much in this, this, this day and age, but in, in days before and then sometimes now, we, we, we name our children or we have a name or we look up and see what our name might mean. You know, I know Susie has looked up my name. It says something like provider or something. You know, William and, and stuff is, is like provider or something. It's kind of the meaning of that name. And all names have a meaning, you know. Well, I'll say all names. I mean, some of the strange names that, that people come up with for, for their children, you know, sometimes you wonder... Has that really got a meaning or even how do you spell that name sometimes? But, you know, but, that, but names have meanings and it's no different with God. It's no different with the Holy Spirit. You know, we can know that by His name and by name we understand characteristics. By name we know the person. See, by God, God goes by many names. You know, the, the most uh, 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 influential, the most powerful name that God goes by is really the name that He has given Himself. And I'm referring there to Exodus, and I've referred to it a little bit last week, where He told Moses, when Moses would ask Him, Who shall I say has sent me? Who am I going to tell the children of Israel has sent me? He said, Tell them that I am. I am that I am has sent you. Whatever you have need of. You see, that name of God today means something for you and I as well as it did for the children of Israel. Some... I don't know, 3,000, 4,000 years ago. It means whatever you have need of, I am. Do you realize what that is? God is. He doesn't just have it. He's not just pulling, you know, peace or joy or whatever. He's not just pulling it off of the shelf and giving it to you. He's giving you Himself. He says, I am that I am. So what is the need in your life today? God is the one. He is the supply he is the, the need meter Amen. for whatever that need Amen. is. Amen? God. I am that I am. Do you need healing today? God is healing. Jehovah Jireh, another name. Abraham would give God that name whenever he would go up to the mountain. and God would say, offer your son Isaac. And Isaac would ask the question. He said, we got the wood and we got the altar and whatever. He says, but where's the sacrifice? Abraham would say in faith, God shall provide for himself a sacrifice. You see, God was testing Abraham. You know, would you be willing to give your son that promise that I gave you? Would you be willing to offer that? You see, God wants to see what will we offer. Are we willing to give up of ourselves? Because that's really what that represented there. Whenever God told him to offer Isaac, Isaac, his only son, his son of old, old age. Anybody in here want to be a hundred year old and have a kid? I don't think I don't think none of these ladies want to have one at eighty or whatever, seventy five, whatever Sarah was, whenever she had it. You know, but God provided for that need. He will provide for you. You know, speaking of names as well, God changes names. He says, he tells us, we know in the book of Revelation, I believe it is, that he will give each of us a new name that only we and him will know. You see, God's going to change your name. He changed Abraham's name. It used to be Abram, and God changed it to Abraham, father of many nations. He said, Sarah, he changed from Sarai to Sarah. 
He changed Jacob, or yeah, it was Jacob, or one of them, from Sir Planter to Prince with God. Or Isaac, yeah, I think it was Jacob, wasn't it? He changed his name. But see, God's going to change our name. There's significance in a name. The name, you know, uh, we look at, look at some of the other names of God. Jehovah Jireh, like I already mentioned. Our provider, Jehovah Rapha. Our healer, Jehovah Shalom. Our peace. You see, what those names of God represent is what He is to us. What He is offering you and I. He's offering us peace. He's offering us health. He's offering us strength. We sung this morning about God is our strength, that Christ is that rock. It's in the name of Jesus that every knee shall bow and every tongue confess at that name that He is Lord. Hmm. We could go on and on of the names of God and the names of Christ and, and they all have meaning. They all tell us something. But as we're looking at the Holy Spirit and the, the, the names, if you will, that the Holy Spirit goes by, we're going to look at a few of those names. Not, we're not going to see by far all of them because we'd be here all day long trying to go through the Word of God and look at every name that represents the Holy Spirit or every name that, that shows us what it is that He will do in our hearts and in our lives. But I've chosen just a few of them. And here in Ephesians chapter 1, and, and in Ephesians here, and, and you know we just went through the book of Ephesians here just shortly ago, a few weeks ago. And in chapter 1, verses 3 through 14, he's telling us all that we have in Christ. If you didn't get to hear those, those messages or if you just want to hear, read it again, go and read that portion of Ephesians. It's one of the, the most concise, if you will, one of the most uh, 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 broad and, 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 and fulfilling Books that Paul or letters that Paul had written telling us what it is that we have in Christ. And if you notice there in, in several places of the scripture there in, in, in uh, let's see, it's uh, uh, verse 6 and in verse 12 and in verse 14. You see, we have all these things in Christ Jesus and we don't just have them to have them. We don't just have, do you know God doesn't give things just to arbitrarily give it out and let us say, oh, look at this, ain't it pretty what I got? But God gives them through His Holy Spirit in order that we might be to the praise of His glory. Do you realize what that saying is or what that's telling us there that as we allow the Holy Spirit to move and to work in our hearts and our lives and as we put our faith in who Christ is and what He did for us at Calvary, it will change our lives. And that change will be a change that the world looks at, that our family might look at. And whether they want to or not, it's to His praise. If God can take a sinner like me and change our hearts and our lives, He can do it for anybody. Mm. <coughs> and it's all to give Him praise. It's to show and to manifest His power. And I'll tell you something. Somebody might get mad at me. Somebody on YouTube or maybe somebody here. I don't know. But what God, what the Holy Spirit is doing, whenever He goes to work in a heart and life, He will change that heart and life. Amen. You know, we got those that are pretenders and those that are contenders, if you will. There are those, there are many of those in the church today that pretend and say, oh, I've been baptized, so I'm saved. They say, oh, I shook the preacher's hand, so I'm saved. Oh, I go to church every Sunday. I want to tell you, none of that stuff means that you're saved. How do you know when somebody is saved or not? How do you know? You know because of the change. Mm, yes, that song, He made a change in me. The way I'm walking, the way I'm talking. There's going to be a change. Oh, what a change He made in me. You see, when the Holy Spirit comes in, he makes a change. He makes a change. I didn't say you wouldn't struggle with some things. I didn't say you wouldn't struggle with some of those sins. There's some whenever they get saved, you know, we've all been a mess. Some are a bigger mess. Some have more things, if let's put it that way. Some of us have allowed more things. We've we brought in more things, you know. 
whether it be alcohol or drugs or whatever, pornography, whatever it is, bad temper. I mean, let's just not go those things. Lying, stealing, whatever it is, we've allowed those things in our life. And some of those things hang on. Some of those things, it's not hard for the Holy Spirit to remove those things. Sometimes it's hard for us to let them go. Some, you know, there's, there's some people that say that I've, I've heard, I've read, I've seen, they, they, uh, they say, oh yeah, I'm, I'm trusting in Jesus. I believe in the message of the cross. And when God's ready, He's going to remove this thing from me. I want to tell you, God's ready right now. God was ready when you got saved, but you wouldn't let it go. You see, don't ever think that you can hang on to your sin and say, oh, well, God will take it away when He's ready. Uh Uh-uh. He's already ready. You know it's sin. You see what I'm saying? There are things in our life that we may not realize sometimes that sin. What is sin? Sin, I believe Susie mentioned it a little bit during song service, sin hinders us and keeps us from that relationship with God. And that sin in our life is a barrier, if you will. And the Holy Spirit is, will teach us. He will lead us. He will guide us into all truth, as we'll see a little bit here. He will lead us. In the, he will give us knowledge and understanding. He will give us revelation, as Paul will speak of here in Ephesians, and where we're going to go in just a minute when I get over this. But He will teach us those things. He will reveal to you. You know, we know there are things that are blatant in your face. We know they're wrong. And I don't care who you are. I don't care where you live, how long you've lived. There are things that you know are wrong. There are attitudes in our heart that we know are wrong. There are things we all do we know are wrong. The Holy Spirit, He will convict of those things. You know, and if we're hanging on to those things, we're grieving the Holy Spirit and we're hindering our walk with the Lord. If you're in a position if you're living a lifestyle that you know is wrong the whole, I don't have to convict I don't have to say anything to you it's the Holy Spirit you know it's wrong and it will hinder your walk with the Lord don't let it but give it over there's nothing there's nothing understand there's nothing worth keeping you from your walk with the Lord amen, amen? and then there's things in our life that we may not you know sometimes it's it's cultural or or whatever, something that we've grown up with, whatever it might be, there's things that, you know, the Holy Spirit has to really bring to us. A lot of that would be hard attitudes a lot of times. Gossip and stuff, or just a waggy tongue, or a look, or an attitude. You know, the Holy Spirit has to show us and tell us, hey, we need to get a hold of this. This isn't bringing glory to God. And see, that's, that's what He wants of us. That's what He wants in our lives. He wants us to bring glory to God. So Paul is is showing here in these first uh, 13 or 14 or so verses of of Ephesians chapter 1 showing us what it is that we have in Christ. It's such a a wonderful, it's such a great, a, a mega magnitude of blessings. You see, everything that God has for you is a blessing. And I've said it before that if God is asking you to lay something aside, it's so that he can, you can draw closer to Him. And the closer that we draw to Him, the greater the blessings there are in your life. Man, if we would just get a hold of that in some things. I'm talking about all of us. There's none. None righteous. And there's none perfect. No, not one. We're all a work in progress. If the Holy Spirit is speaking to you, let it go. Because God is wanting you to draw nearer to Him. He's wanting you to have a closer relationship. Isn't that something? The God who created the universe. He hung the stars and the planets and everything that we look up in the sky and see in the night. The mightiness and the magnitude of God And he's saying, I want to fellowship with you. I want to have relationship with you. You know, as crummy as we might be sometimes, as jerk as we might be sometimes, God's still saying, I love you and I want to have a relationship with you. My, my, my. Mm, If we would just get over us. 
lay us down. Self, as I've said in the past, is our greatest enemy. Self is our greatest hindrance. That thing that says, I want this because it's my right or whatever. Me, 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 my, 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 I, I, I. You know, God is saying, I'm your exceeding great reward. That's what he told Abraham. I am your exceeding great reward. Mm -mm -mm. So anyway, Paul goes over that and he shows us all that we have. In verse 14, he says, or verse, let's go back to verse 12. He says, that we should be to the praise of his glory, who first trusted in Christ, in whom you also trusted after that you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that you believed you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, the, which is, speaking of the Holy Spirit, the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession. We are that purchased possession. We've been bought with a price. You're not your own. You realize that. Amen. You are not your own. You've been bought with a price to the redemption. That redemption there has to do, like I just said earlier, about everything that Adam lost in the fall. Jesus Christ, through what He did for us at Calvary, He has made it possible for us to be redeemed, to be bought back, to receive all that God has for mankind. Jesus made it possible and He did it by going to Calvary. That's why we say our faith must rest in who He is and what He's done for us. Amen. Not trusting in anything else. See, we can't even trust our own confession. We can't even trust in our giving, our tithing, our Bible study, our praying. Those things are good things. We can have a good confession. We can, we can confess the Word of God, but don't be thinking because you're confessing the Word of God that you're going to make something happen. Do you know that the creation, I heard, I believe, I believe it was on study of the Word this week, they were talking about that. They said the creation can never be the Creator. Mm. We can't create things out of our mouth. That's a false teaching. All we can say is what God has already said. Praise God. And, all it will, and what it will do is bring about what God has purposed for it to bring about. You hear what I'm saying? But it's, it is always, and if you understand this, you always, if, 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 if that, that Holy Spirit of promise that we've been given is always to bring about praise to the Father, to bring praise to to Jesus. We're going to look at John chapter 14 through and chapters 14 through 16. That's that's what Jesus was talking about whenever he would say that when the Holy Spirit has come, he won't speak of himself, but he will glorify me. You see, how do we know if something's of the Holy Spirit? Does it glorify Christ? Does it bring praise and glory to God? Does it give Him all the honor, all the praise? If it doesn't bring it to God, then it's not the Holy Spirit. Amen. We've got a lot of stuff that goes about or has gone about in the church today and in the past. That, that oh, this thing over here, they're, they're having angel feathers and, and gold dust falling out of the ducts in the ceiling or they're having this, that, or the other and all that foolishness. It didn't bring praise and glory to God. It only brought praise and, and maybe glory to men. Oh, you got to go hear Mr. Benny Hinn or, or, or Rodney Howard Brown. or blah. That's the one. No, it's not. It's the Holy Ghost. It's the Holy Spirit. And He can bring about what He needs to in every heart and life that will trust Him. You don't have to run off over here or over there and hear this one or that one or the other one. But you can get into the Word of God and ask the Holy Spirit, Lord, show me, teach me, lead me, guide me. And He will. It doesn't matter where you're at. Hmm. Is it wrong to go hear somebody? No. But don't be putting your faith there. Yeah. See, that's the key. Keep your faith in Christ. Amen. Keep looking to Him. And the Holy Spirit will be at work and Jesus will be praised. Amen. He will be glorified. That's how we know is it the Holy Spirit. So He would say that the Holy Spirit there in verse 14, 
is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession, the buying back, the coming back to Him, the being brought back into that state which He originally intended you and I to be, mankind to be, and that will be to His praise and His glory. Mm. To bring back a mess like me, a mess like you, to restore us to that original place and position that God intended for us, for mankind to be. Before He ever created man, He had a purpose and an intent for man. Like I said, the devil's tried to mess that up. But see, in all that the enemy has done, all that he's tried to, to destroy and to kill and to steal, he, he, he will not overpower God. He will not make God's creation into a mess. God is restoring His creation through Christ and by what He did for us at Calvary. Verse 15, he says, Wherefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus, and love to all the saints, cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of of him. So right there we see one of the names of the Holy Spirit. He is the spirit of wisdom and revelation. That means that the wisdom and the revelation, the understanding and the revealing of all that Christ has done for us at Calvary comes to us by means of the Holy Spirit and only by means of the Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit who will reveal things to us. Jesus said so much. He said that He will reveal to you whatsoever I have said to you. He will bring it to your remembrance. He will teach you all things. That's the job of the Holy Spirit. He is that Spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Him, of God, of Christ, of all that He has provided for us. He says that the eyes of your understanding being enlightened. You're not ha going to have any enlightenment. You're not going to have any understanding without that coming from the Holy Spirit. You can't know God except for through the power of the Holy Spirit moving in your life. You see, we were in darkness. When the Holy Spirit comes in, He sheds light on things. This world today, they think they're in an enlightened state. Oh, because they accept homosexuality as a norm or the deviance of everything else that they're trying to teach our kids in school. They think, oh, we're in an enlightened age and they don't even realize that they're in greater darkness than ever before. And it takes the power of the Spirit to bring that enlightenment to us. Mm. Why is the church ineffective today? You know, I've, I've said it in the past. You know, if, 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 if purpose-driven life and modern church growth movements and, and this grow your church a bigger church kind of stuff that's been going on ever since the 80s, if this word of faith confession stuff is all right, it's of the Lord, then why do we see the darkness increasing in the world today? Why do we see the darkness in the church? Increasing. Then not the, the, there is less of an understanding. The Word of God says, My people perish for lack of knowledge. And they don't want the knowledge. <coughs> they don't want the Holy Spirit, the one who brings knowledge. How much today? You know, before we started this, the study on the Holy Spirit, I, I told you that I'd heard a study that over like 30 or 40% of the church today doesn't even know of the Holy Spirit. They think the Holy Spirit is just some kind of energy like electricity if they even think He exists at all. Those are people in the church. Why would people in the church have an understanding, not know 
who the Holy Spirit of God is. Why would they not know how He works and how He moves? It's because it's not being taught. It's because they're not going to the Word of God and not looking in the Word of God to see what it has to say and letting the Spirit enlighten it to them. We are in a time today. The Word of God speaks in the time of old of a famine in the land. We're in a time today, a famine of hearing the Word of God. Of knowing the Word of God. Of having the enlightenment of the Holy Spirit and the knowledge and revelation that the Holy Spirit brings because the majority of the church today has said we don't need the Holy Spirit any longer. We don't believe in the miracles of the Holy Spirit. We don't believe that this is is of God any longer. The baptism in the Holy Spirit, they needed it then, but we don't need it today is what they'll teach. And in teaching that, they push the Holy Spirit out of the church. Is it any wonder the darkness has increased? My goodness, we're to the point now in schools. One of my cousins said her son went to school and on the first day of school in Moore, the teacher said, Okay, today you get to decide, are you a boy or a girl? Are you kidding me? We think here in Oklahoma, we're okay. Oh, we got... That foolishness is in our schools as well. That says you can choose your gender. You're talking about dark. There's no enlightenment there. That's darkness. The stuff that's called critical race theory that says, oh, all people, all white people are bad and all other people are just victims is a bunch of baloney. People don't realize it says a theory. Just like evolution is a theory, but it's taught as fact. Yeah, it's wrong. It's dead wrong. Men's hearts are evil. I don't care if they're black, white, red, blue, brown, pink, purple polka dots. The heart of man is deceitfully wicked. That's what the Word of God tells us. All men are in need of salvation. All men are in need of what Christ did for us at Calvary. All men are in need of the enlightening, the knowledge and the revelation that the Holy Spirit brings. You read through here in these first first verses here of Ephesians 1. Of all that we have in Christ... And the church is timid to tell somebody about it. Oh, I don't want to say I might get, they might get offended. What in the world do you have to be offended about about what God has done, what Christ has provided? He's given peace and joy and hope. Amen. I think this world needs some peace. They need some joy. They need some hope. My goodness, the church today, oh, I don't want to offend. Come be our, come into our church. We're seeker sensitive. We're seeker sensitive too. We want you to seek the Lord and be sensitive to the leading and guiding of the Holy Spirit. Let Him lead you and teach you. Amen? He will convict of sin. Why? There's a teaching out there that says, oh, the Holy Spirit don't convict of sin anymore. Well, that spirit you're being led by, maybe He don't. He probably don't because He's of another spirit. But the Holy Spirit will convict of sin. The Word of God tells us that. Yes, that is love. Oh, we can't tell them that homosexuality is wrong. That's not love. Yes, that is. Because ultimately, the lifestyle of homosexuality, the lifestyle of the drunkard, the lifestyle of the pornography, whatever it is, is going to lead you to a devil's hell. Mm. Love says everything you need is in Christ. Love, oh my goodness, God so loved the world that He gave His only Son, that whosoever, whosoever, anybody who wants or will can be saved. Some aren't chosen for hell. God did not create hell for man. His Word tells us that. It was created for the devil and his angels. God's not willing that any should perish, but that all men should come to the knowledge of the salvation that's in Christ Jesus. We can trust Him. The God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father 
of glory may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of Him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of His calling. Mm. You see, the Holy Spirit is going to reveal those things to you. The hope of His calling. We have a hope. We can look forward. It's not a hope or a hope so that maybe it will or maybe it will. It's a definite. Do you know that? What God has established, the redemption that we have in Christ, is a definite. When we put our trust in Him, we don't have to worry. We have committed to Him our soul. We have committed to Him our eternity. And He is able to keep that which we have committed unto Him. Amen? His Word tells us that too. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened... That enlightening, you may know what is the hope of His calling. You may know what the riches of the glory of His inheritance in the saints. You see, that's what He's showing us here. As the Holy Spirit, that, that spirit of wisdom and revelation makes these things real. This is what He's going to reveal to you. This is what the Holy Spirit is going to show us. He's going to show us what's the hope of the calling of, uh, of our calling in Christ. He's going to show us what are the riches of the glory of that inheritance that we have. He's going to show us what the exceeding great, what is the exceeding greatness of His power towards us who believe. Hmm. These are all things that the Holy Spirit through that wisdom and knowledge and revelation is going to make known unto you. You don't have to be in the dark. You don't have to be not knowing what it is that Christ has done for you because the Holy Spirit, if you're looking to Jesus, the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus, as we put our faith in Christ, who He is and what He's done, the Holy Spirit will be revealing these things to us. And as He reveals these things to us, as if we get down there to it, He's going to produce holiness, righteousness in our lives. Like I said, the, when the Holy Spirit comes in and our faith is placed in Christ and Him crucified, we won't remain the same. You won't want to be the same. Hmm. There's been a change in me. Amen? Amen? Yes. What's the exceeding, exceeding greatness? The over and abounding. The, if, if you could say the abounding greatness of what we have in Christ. A throwing beyond, that's what the word means. Superior excellence. Surpassing power. It goes over and above. Is what that exceeding greatness is of His power. What is that power? We go over to Romans chapter 8, verse 11. Whoops, wrong deal. Romans chapter 8 is, you know, as you study through Romans and Romans 6, 7, and 8, Romans chapter 8 is what the Holy Spirit also wants to do in our hearts and in our lives. But Romans chapter 8 and verse 11, it says, if the, same, if the Spirit of Him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwells in you, He that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal body. That means make alive, give you power, give you strength. You'll have His strength, not your own. You'll have His strength. Make, it will quicken your mortal bodies by His Spirit that dwells. Amen. Hmm. What does it mean to dwell? It means to live. It means to inhabit. It means to reside. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. He that comes in and sits down. You see, the Holy Spirit wants to come in. He wants to sit down in your house. He wants to dwell. He wants to be with you. He wants to lead and guide and teach you and show you things to come. Amen? Mm. Back over to Ephesians.
What is the exceeding greatness of His power to usward? Who believe? you got to believe. According to the working of His mighty power. Didn't we just sing that song? Not by might, not by power, but by my Spirit, saith the Lord. His Holy Spirit is that power that we need. He says, far above all principality. Verse 20, excuse me which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places. That's what I was referring to there in Romans 8, 11. That same spirit that raised Christ from the dead, it dwells in the believer. He wants to quicken. He wants to enlighten. He wants to lead us, teach us, guide us into all knowledge and understanding. You know, by names... We understand personalities and characteristics. By those names of God, we understand who He is. We understand what He has done by the name of Jesus Christ. His name alone, Jesus Christ, anointed Savior, is what His name means. It says, at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that He is Lord to the glory mm of God the Father. Amen. Amen. Ain't that what he's talking about somewhat here? To the glory of the Lord, of the Father, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in heavenly places far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which ha is to come. He set him far above. Do you know you are seated with him? That's what he'll go on to say here in Ephesians. We're, not, we're, we're seated with Christ Amen. in heavenly places. And because we're seated with him, we can stand against the wiles of the enemy. We don't have to worry about it. Amen? Amen. Spirit of knowledge. Spirit of truth, John chapter 14, verse 16. Like I said a little bit earlier, we need to be looking in the Word of God, the Holy Spirit. Jesus, this is just before Jesus was to go to Calvary. This is, is at, at, <clears throat> at the time that he was speaking to, the, to, to his disciples. Thomas would ask him, he said, where are you going? And Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me, in verse 6. Then verse 15, he says, if you love me, keep my commandments. He says, and I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever, even the Spirit of truth. You see, that's another name, another title that the Holy Spirit goes under is the Spirit of truth. And what this actually is saying is there's a definite article before truth there. He says the Spirit of the truth. You see, everything the Holy Spirit shows you, everything He teaches you, everything He brings an enlightenment and understanding to you, a knowledge to you, if it's the Holy Spirit, it's going to point you to the way, the truth, and the life who is Jesus Christ he said even the spirit of the truth whom the world cannot receive because they see him not neither know him but you know him for he dwells with you and shall be in you mm, at that time they couldn't receive him because he had, Jesus hadn't gone to Calvary. Do you know when Jesus paid the price on Calvary's cross, He didn't just only pay the price for our sin. He didn't just only save us from the power of sin. He didn't only just deliver us from the penalty of sin, but He made it possible that the Holy Spirit could come in and abide. They didn't have that in the Old Testament days. They didn't have that when Jesus was here. The Holy Spirit could be with them, could be upon them, could teach them. They did that with, with, the, with the craftsmen whenever they went to build the temple and the tabernacle. God would put His Spirit on them. 
and they would know how to do things. They say that the menorah, the Word of God tells us that it was of one piece of gold beaten and made into that shape of those, those, those candlesticks and stuff. And even today they can't figure out how they did that. How they made that from one beaten piece, you know, hammered out or whatever. Piece of gold. But God gave that knowledge to them to be able to do that by the power of the Spirit. Now it couldn't rest upon, or it couldn't stay there with them, but He came upon them for that certain task in the Old Testament days. But since Calvary, we can have the fullness of the Spirit in our lives teaching us when the time comes the Holy Spirit could teach you how to make a menorah if you had to if it would glorify Jesus I'm saying that he will I'm not saying that he won't but you see that's what he can do he can teach you things I don't know the times in my work I've had to ask the Lord help me with this I can't figure it out and it'll be something that'll just come to your mind and it'll be so simple most of the time you know, nothing's hard for the Holy Spirit. The only thing, if you want to say it's hard, is Him getting into our hard hearts, getting us to lay down ourselves. That's the hardest thing He has to do. We were talking a little bit before church, talking about children of Israel, how when things were going good, oh, they were, everything was cool. But yet when they went, whenever things were going good was when the time that they went off chasing after other gods. You know, children of Israel, just look at it this way. They go to Mount Sinai. They, Moses goes up to get the law. Children of Israel have been released from Egyptian bondage. Hey, wonderful, great. Moses goes up there. They say, oh, Moses is gone. We don't know who he is. Let's make us a golden calf. We do the same thing. Things are good. Hey, let's get us a golden calf. These be the gods that saved you, Israel. We do the same things. Church has done the same thing. I don't care who we are. Man, ain't no. it don't matter if they were 6,000 years ago or six days ago. The heart. The heart of man hasn't changed. You see, and when things are going good, sometimes God has to bring us to our knees. I think that's what He's doing with the church in America today. He's bringing us to our knees. Yeah. Bringing us to that place where we turn away from all our other idols. All our purpose driven. All our this, that, or the other. Everything. All our confession. How's your confession working out for you, Word of Faith? You confessed away Joe Biden yet? You confessed away abortion yet? You confessed away all this baloney going on, this stuff in the schools? It ain't going to work. It's only by the power of the Holy Spirit. And as we repent of our sin. You see, we need a church that's going to get up and speak up. Yes. Get a backbone and stand up. Amen. Yes. Instead of sitting around saying, well, maybe somebody else will do it. Or, oh, I don't know if I should say, yeah, you should say something. Right. We need some church folks. We need some believers to get on some school boards. We need some believers to get in some house seats and some senate seats and some president seats and all that. But even at that, don't sit back. Don't sit back and say, oh, we got this. We can coast now. Uh -uh. Jesus said, occupy till I come. That's a military term. Mm -hmm. That means we keep on. We keep on. And we don't relent. The gates of hell shall not prevail. You hear me? If we just get out there and start knocking on them, get out there and start witnessing, gates of hell, it, the gates of hell in the hearts of men and women cannot stand the word of God. Why do you think they're trying to shut the church down today? Because the enemy knows, and he's the one behind all of what's going on. He knows that the Word of God is the only thing that gets into the heart. Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. And as that Word is preached and taught, our sons and daughters, grandkids, cousins, nephews, whatever, that are lost, don't, don't sit back and say, oh, I don't want to offend them. Give them the word. Tell them you must be born again. Tell them Jesus is coming soon. Tell them this world is about to wind things up. 
and you ain't going to have much time left, do you know that there's going to be a big portion of this world that's going to die and go to hell in the next several years? At the time of the Great Tribulation, I think it's like one third or maybe more of that of the world's population is going to die during that time. During that seven year period, we need to be telling them. If they reject it, then it's on them. But if we don't tell them, what do you tell Ezekiel? Their blood is on your hands. Be preaching that. Where they may be, you may be the only one they'll ever hear it from. Be giving it to them. He is the spirit of truth. Tell them the truth. What did Paul say to the Ephesians? He said, have I become your enemy because I tell you the truth? Whenever he would come down on them for going after false ways and following a wrong gospel. There were some that were probably coming to Paul and saying, hey, who are you to tell us this? I ain't nobody, but I'm telling you what the Word of God says. If you've got a problem, hey, here's your perfect time to take it to the man. Take it to him. Take it to the, the Father and see what he says to you. You hear me? Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive. That tells us that the Holy Spirit's not going to help those who aren't saved. Because it sees Him not or knows Him. But you know Him, for He dwells with you and shall be in you. John 15, verse 26. And over and over and over, the Lord is going to say this same thing. John 15 and 26. He says, But when the Comforter has come, who's the Comforter? The Holy Spirit. There, there again, there's another title of the Holy Spirit. Do you need some comfort today? He's the Comforter. He is the one you can go to and say, Lord, I just don't know. Lord, I'm hurting. Lord, I'm upset. Father, show me. Amen. And He'll give you comfort. Yes, and with that comfort will come peace. Amen. He'll come alongside, it says. That's what that comfort, that parakletos is. He says, But when the Comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceeds from the Father, he shall testify of me. And you also shall bear witness because you have been with me from the beginning. The Comforter, whom I will send you from the Father, He comes from the Father. Even the Spirit of truth, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, which proceeds from the Father. Hmm. You know, when you see something once, it's important. You see it twice and in the same verse, it's even more important. He shall testify of me. What do we know about the spirit of truth? He's going to tell you about Jesus, who is the truth, who is the way. The Holy Spirit is always, always, always going to point you to Jesus. You see, that's why I say that this foolishness that went on several years ago. Oh, it's the Holy Spirit. He filled my teeth with gold. No, He didn't. Your dentist did. Holy Spirit ain't going to put gold in your teeth. He's going to fix your teeth. Amen. He's not just going to give you a patch. <coughs> you see, everything God does is perfect. Amen. Everything the Holy Spirit does is perfect. He doesn't do anything 50%. He doesn't do anything 99.99999%. Everything He does is perfect. Amen. You see, the perfection that God created man in has gotten messed up. But God is redeeming us and restoring us to that perfection. Do you realize one day you're going to be perfect? Just as God made you, you're going to be the perfection. You're going to be exactly how God made us one day for those who trust in Christ. Hmm. Those who don't... <coughs> They're going to have the reward of the enemy, that hell fire. My, 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 we don't want that. You don't want that. I don't want my children or anybody else to have that. Tell them the spirit of truth 
which proceeds from the Father. 1 John chapter 4. First John chapter 4, verse 1. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Hereby know ye the Spirit of God. Listen. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is come of the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist, whereof ye have heard that it should come, even, even now already is in the world. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Greater is He, who's He speaking of there? The Spirit of Truth. The Holy Spirit of God. Greater is He that is in you than he that is in the world. Every spirit that confesses not that Jesus has come in the flesh is not of God. Hmm. Mormonism, Catholicism, Jehovah Witness, Islam, some of these people in these churches today, they say that what Christ did at Calvary wasn't enough. Oh my. The teaching that says that Calvary wasn't a finished work, that's an Antichrist spirit. Be careful who you're listening to. True Holy Spirit preaching, singing, Teaching will always, always, always point to Christ. Point you to who He is and what He did. That's how you know. Is it the Holy Spirit or another spirit? Does it glorify Jesus? All right, trying to close here. Spirit of Holiness, Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1. Whoops, let me find the verse. Verse 2. No. Verse 4. Okay, we're going to have to back up to verse 1. Paul, a servant of Jesus, Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel of God. Pay attention to that word separated. Which he, may, which he had promised afore by his prophets in the Holy Scriptures, concerning his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, which was made of the seed of David according to the flesh, and declared to be the Son of God with power according to the Spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead. Paul starts out this book of Romans here. He's saying, and declared to be the Son of God with power. What was that power? It's that same power, that same Spirit that dwells in you. It was that power of the resurrection. It was the Holy Spirit that caused Christ to rise from the dead, that brought Him back alive. He's the same Spirit that dwells in you and I, that brings life to us, as we saw in Romans chapter 8, that quickens this mortal body and gives us life. Declared to be the Son of God with power according to the Spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead. The Holy Spirit, another one of the titles of the Holy Spirit is He is the Spirit of holiness. That word holiness comes from the Greek word hagios and it means to separate, to call out, to bring, to, 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 to take from... <laughs> <coughs> one position and put in another. <coughs> like I've been saying, when the Holy Spirit comes in, He brings a separation. 
Paul says he was separated. What was he separated from? He was separated from that old life. Paul would say, he said, hey, I was a good guy. I was a Pharisee of the Pharisees. He said, I was born a, a Jew. He said, I was circumcised. I followed all the law. But it was the Holy Spirit that had to separate him from that. You see, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of holiness, He will separate you. Like I was saying earlier, if we claim to be born again, there will be a separation. We won't want those things that we used to want. Those things that we used to crave. Sometimes it'll take a while for us to let them go. Sometimes it takes a while for the Holy Spirit to get a hold of us to let them go. Sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes there's things that just fall right off. But the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of holiness that will separate, hagios, to separate, to, to make holy. You see what else I got there on that. God is holy he says, I am holy, therefore be ye holy. You see, God sets separated from all that's in this world. He's calling us to a life of separation. And it's only possible by the power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will bring this, this separatedness, this holiness out. You see, there's a, there's a, sec, a section or a segment of the church that says, oh, we're holiness. We've all seen them. We all know them. You know, some Pentecostal holiness, some of them aren't Pentecostal, but they all say holiness. And what their holiness is, is it revolves around how they look and how they dress. And I'll tell you, that will be a part. But you know, one thing I find kind of strange about most of these holiness movements we see today is it always seems like it's the women who have to look a certain way and dress a certain way oh. instead of the guys. You know, guys can still, you know, in some of those groups, oh, guys can't have beards, or some guys, you have to have beards. Which one's right? You see, that's the problem we have with religion. One religion says this, another one says that, and they're just totally opposite, but they both claim to be doing the same service for God. Mm-mm. Holiness is not in the way you cut your hair or wear your, or the way you wear your clothes, so to speak. Okay, ladies, whatever, guys, we don't need to be showing everything. You know, there's modesty. You know, Paul talks about that with the braided hair and such. You know, don't be looking like, you know, don't be drawing attention to yourself. But it's not that, uh, you know, ladies can't have jewelry or makeup or, most guys shouldn't want jewelry, or shouldn't want makeup. I'm sorry, you can have jewelry. Sorry about that. You know what I'm saying. But that's not where our holiness is. Our holiness is found in Christ. We are the righteousness of God in Christ. As the Holy Spirit comes in, when we give our heart and life to Christ, the Holy Spirit comes in, and He will bring about Holiness. He will bring about that separation. Come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord. And I will receive you. I will be a father to you and you'll be my sons and daughters. That's just a paraphrase of that verse. Corinthians 7.14 You see, the Holy Spirit is calling us out. That calling that we looked at a little bit earlier there in Ephesians, the hope of the calling... Part of that calling is calling us out from where we were to a new place and position in Christ Jesus. Let the Holy Spirit do His work in you. Amen. Producing holiness and righteousness because it's all for our good. You realize that? I've said it before. Everything that God has for you is good, is wonderful, is beautiful, it's all for your benefit. Don't turn away from it. When He calls you out, He calls you out for a reason. And it's to give you life 
to give you power, to give you strength through His Spirit to be what He originally created us to be. Amen? I want more of that. I want to be closer to Him more than anything else. And you see, whenever He makes us into His image, whenever He makes us into that original man or woman that He intended us to be, we're going to have that fellowship and that communion with Him. And we can trust in Him. Amen? Amen. Let's stand. May, if you have a song or something. If there's anybody here this morning who wants more of the Lord, who wants that holiness in their heart, in their life, I want to just tell you, come on. As we sing here this morning, put your trust in Him. Put your hope in Him. And draw near to Him. And let Him move in your heart and life, making you what He wants you. Because it's all for your good. I'll tell you something else too. As it's for your good, whenever He's moving in your life, it's going to be good for those around you. Amen. You realize that? Where you work, in your family, it's going to be good for them. Because He's at work and He only does. Every good and perfect gift comes from above. Amen? Put your trust in Him this morning. Let's sing this song. If you need prayer, come on. Whatever you need prayer for, we'll pray with you. That's who I am. I'm a new creation. I'm a brand new man. I'm a new creation. I'm a brand new man. Old things are passed away. I've been born again. Christian Academy, and Brighton has memorized him and his class. Come over here, sweetheart. He has memorized the whole, stay down there, I'm going to come with you, the whole chapter, Psalms 139, and he's going to quote that for us this morning. I'm going to help him. We're going to say it together. Are you ready? Go ahead. Oh, Lord, Lord thou, thou hast searched me and known me. me. Thou knowest my down city and my uprising. Thou understandest my thought afar off. Thou compassest my path and my lying down and art acquainted with all my ways. For there is not a word in my tongue, but lo, O Lord, thou knowest it all together. Thou hast set, set me behind and before, and laid thy hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high, I cannot attain unto it. Whither shall I go from thy spirit, or whither shall I flee from thy presence? If I ascend up into heaven, thou art there. If, if I, I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. If, if I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts, parts of the sea, even there shall thy hand lead me, 
and thy right, right hand shall hold me. If I say, Surely the darkness shall cover me, even the night shall be light unto me. Yea, the darkness hideth not from thee, but the night shineth as the day. The darkness and the light are both alike to thee, for thou hast possessed my reins, thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth right well. My substance was not hid from thee when I was made in secret and curiously wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. Thine eyes did see my substance, yet being unperfect, in, the, in thy book all my members were written, which in continuance was fashioned, when as yet there was none of them. How precious also are thy thoughts unto me, O God! How great is the sum of them! If I should count them, they are more in number than the sand. When I awake, I am still with thee. Surely thou wilt slay the wicked, O God. Depart from me, therefore, ye bloody men, for they speak against thee wickedly, and thy enemies take thy name in vain. Do not I hate them, O Lord, that hate thee, and am not I grieved with those that rise up against thee. I hate them with perfect hatred. I count them my enemies. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and see if there be any wicked way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. Psalm 139. Good wow. job. Good job. Good job. Good job. <laughs> Search me and know me. Is that our prayer? That he would see and reveal to us anything that's not pleasing to him. Amen? Amen. Carlos, you want to dismiss us this morning? Yeah, Father Lord, we thank you, Lord, for the privilege for having you here, Lord. We thank you for your word, Lord. We thank you for your spirit, Lord, that's been in this place, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for everything that you've done, Lord, and what you're going to do for us, Lord. We're believing in you, Lord, and what you yes. can do, Lord, because you're a mighty God, Amen. Lord, and we believe in you, yes. in your power, Lord. We believe in everything that you can do, Lord. Yes. Lord, take all that down in our hearts, Lord. Yes. Take away all the, all, all the stuff that's in there, Lord. We ask yes, you, Lord. God. To help each and one of us, Lord, in our, da in our daily work, in our daily labor, Lord, in our yes. families, Lord. We ask you, Lord, to continue guiding us through your spirit, Lord. We thank you for everything, for Pastor Tom and Sister Susie, Lord, for what they're doing, Lord. You, We're Lord. so grateful, Lord. We thank you for everything. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Don't forget about Tuesday evening and Thursday. Hope it's everything.